ढाका इंटरनेशनल यूनिवर्सिटी Thanks, Mr. Tata, for giving a good introduction. Um, thanks to the New Horizon College of Engineering for hosting such an auspicious uh, event. Uh, distinguished dignitaries, we're sitting on dais um, and in front of in front seats, and all the students. Very good morning, and also thanks to Shahu. He really shake the whole audit, uh, whole audience, and many of us sleeping after Shahu's <laughs> um, talk. Many. Uh, Many uh, wake up, so the, the 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 fault is in the in the couching. I think it's very comfortable. So if you go to Harvard University, you will never found a such couch. They have a bench and something like that. No back supports. Uh, and also, if you look at Tagore's university conception, Tagore says the university should not have any boundary. The university should not have any classrooms. Should not have any chair table. You can learn sitting under the tree. So that's the idea of Tagore. We need to back to that to avoid from sleeping tendency. <laughs> okay, now um, why? If, if you look at the theme of the today's topic, social entrepreneurship and economic development, of course the, the thing come to our mind. Why it's not only entrepreneurship? Why it's not only business? Why it's social entrepreneurship? This is because the traditional model of business, the traditional capitalism. The traditional new economic theories or new capitalisms, they start working in the way it was expected to work. The problem with the economics of or the pioneering economists of new uh, of capitalism is that they concentrated too much on profit and concentrated too much on selfish business. Capitalism believes all human beings are selfish; they want to make profit, and that selfishness create a competition. And that competition will create a level playing field, and that will contribute in the growth, and that growth will contribute development, and that development will eventually remove inequality or other problems in the pending world. That was expected, and one uh, Nobel laureate economist, I think Kuznev, he also wrote a book on this, and he got Nobel Prize on this theory. The year he got Nobel Prize in the year 1971, in the same year. Thomas Piketty born. Later, Thomas Piketty also studied Kuznev. Initially, he was a big fan of Kuznev. He was disciple of Kuznev, and then he retracted. No, this can't be. Growth cannot automatically include development. Growth cannot automatically include inclusive development. Growth does not automatically remove inequality. Sometimes, growth include or promote inequality. I will show you some examples. In 2016, the Harvard University they conducted research on the millennials. That means you, the young people with technology, with with new vision, new design of the world, and it shows that almost the study was done amongst 18 to 22 years of age youths, and 42 percent support capitalism, the prevailing system. 51 says no, we don't support capitalism. Earlier Pew Institute, 46 percent people of America they support positive capitalism. And 47, this is no capitalism is not working at all. So this result shake the whole world, because when in 1990 the communism fall or the US Soviet Russia fall, most of the economists says what we are telling so far is absolutely right. It is our capitalism sustained, and USSR model or Soviet model fall. But after 27 years, 37 years of from 1990. 47% youth is saying we are not happy with capitalism. This is because the present model of business, the present model of capitalism, capitalism is making so leftover problems. This Mr. Pranav um, says, how many of you want to be entrepreneurs? Few raise your hands. Uh, can I ask a question to the students? Yeah. How many of you want a good job? Can you raise your hand? So uh, we uh, we found five or six hands who want to be entrepreneurs. Now I can see five and six hands who want jobs, and there are hundreds in between who don't know what to do. <laughs> so this is one of the leadership purpose we must aim at leadership training: the purpose driven business, the purpose of life, the purpose of study, the purpose of your entrepreneurship, the purpose of your education, the purpose of everything. A purpose driven. 
approach we must include in our education system as well as every in everywhere. Now, if you look at the inequality situation of the world, for last 20 years there is a rising and there is a constantly rising trends of wealth concentration. And Oxfam says in 2010, 366 people of the world, they control more wealth than 3.66 billion people of the world. So you will see the difference. So after eight years, in January 2018, Oxfam do a revisit research of the earlier research, and surprisingly they found that now eight people, only eight people of the world, they control more wealth than 3.88 billion people of the world. So you see how much the wealth concentration. And it's not always wealth concentration. When one man or one company or few company control more wealth, they naturally control power, they control politics, they control legislation, and then the whole system becomes a system for the riches, a system for the haves, a system which does not improve the have-nots, a system which does not look into the bottom poor peoples. So, this is the scenario. Now, why we have to concentrate on entrepreneurship? Because many of you raise your hand that we want a very good job. Now, how many of you, how many of you absolutely certain that you will get a good job? One, two, three, good, four. So five hands already missing. Five person who want a good job, still not certain that they will get a good job. If you accumulate all the unemployed people in the whole world, in a single country, that country alone will be bigger than China. So that is the leftover problem of capitalism. If you look at the Bangladesh, it's full of youths like India. We are in, in the large democratic dividend. We have um, every year we add 20 lakhs people in our workforce. 10 lakh people goes to abroad for doing work. And rest 10 lakhs, we don't know what to do. That's why we, it's important to create entrepreneurs and that's why it's important to create social entrepreneurs. Why we need social entrepreneurs? For two reasons. First, we concentrate too much on profit making rather than problem solving. So one company is making huge pro profit. On the other hand, there is rural problem. There is urban problem. There is problem with HIV. There is problem with sanitation. There is problem with health, cancer, kidney, so many problems. So you cannot make an isolated development. On the one hand, you can make growth. On the other hand, you can left all the problems unsolved. Growth is quantitative. Development is qualitative. So you need development, not only growth. For students, I know all of you opted for good grades. Uh, well, you must know many drop out university students become the best entrepreneurs in the whole world. So grades does not create entrepreneurs. So now uh, we are in the era where the whole economic model of the world would need to be redesigned. And this is so important for countries like India and Bangladesh because we are full of problem, we are full of youths, and we are full of potentials, and we are full of creative potentials. And we, in the era of um, this fourth industrial revolution, we need to take it as a uh, opportunity, as well as take it as a um, challenge. Because on the one hand, uh, in future world, maybe uh, the workers will be robotics, uh, the nurse will be robot nurse, a computer will do many brain works which human beings are doing, so that will cut a lot of jobs. On the other hand, it is creating a situation um, where business will be easier. Uh, look at booking.com, so they don't own any hotels, but they booked highest number of hotel rooms in the whole world. Uh, or the Shaul's project, I, I'm very uh, look at the Netflix. I think Netflix don't have any cinema halls in the anywhere in the world, but most people see movie in the Netflix. So that's the opportunity of uh, of fourth industrial revolution. Also, that the challenge, and it is important that the entrepreneurs convert problems into prospects. I give you just one example. Most popular shoes in the world at the moment is the Neti shoes. That's that's a, that's a Nike model, very light shoes. Very comfortable, very uh, workable, uh, sportsy, fashionable, and it is made out from plastics. So what Nike basically do, they, they purchase plastics, recycle them into net, and convert them into shoes. So the problem with plastic, they're converting the problem of, of plastic into business prospects. So this is important. So those who are want to be social entrepreneurs, I would say, 
First, find the problem. If you can identify the problem of the society, you can solve it. If you can't identify the property, the problem of a society, you can't solve it. So find a problem, then with your knowledge, skill, experience, convert this problem into a business prospect, add business and prospects. Do not only concentrate on profit making, concentrate on, on problem solving. Now social entrepreneurship is a hybrid thing like that. There is no harm if you make profit. Profit must be made if you want to be a businessman. And there is no nothing bad if you are rich. The rich people are rich not because they make the poor are poor. Rich people are rich and poor people remain poor, poor because of the system. That's why we need a redesigned economic model, redesigned economic system, redesigned social entrepreneurship. Nani Palkiwala, one of my favorite lawyer, one of my favorite critic, he was a lawyer in the Delhi Supreme Court, and he says, what enormous economic prospect a country can have if businessmen become socially responsible, if businessmen look into business in a more social way. And also he says, it is important that the businessmen become now social entrepreneurs because the businessmen lost the credentials in the society. He also gives some examples. In the ancient period, when people used to go Hajj or pilgrimage or Yatra, they used to leave all their property to the local businessman. I keep my property to you, you look after it. If I come back, you'll get it back to me. If I don't come back, you distribute it among my heirs. That much confidence people used to have on businessmen. Social entrepreneurship will bring back that confidence of business community from the society. That is so important for the national build-up. We're looking in a we're living in a world where Donald Trump owned the vote in a popular vote, where Brexit is the issue in England, where extreme rightist uh, parties are getting popular day by day in all over the world. So this is all because of the present model of business is not working. This is because the present model is not satisfying the youth. The youth are not happy with what they are inheriting. They want to create and redesign their own world. And of course, the social entrepreneurship will be good supplement in the present system. It can't replace the whole system, but it can be very good supplement. I think the initiative that has been taken by this New Horizon College, so New Horizon College of Engineering is a very good initiative. Um, I worked with Mr. Datta on many occasions. He's a very good organizer, and, and I can I learned so many things from the speakers, so many experience they have uh, shared. I have to say something about me. I am I'm just 38 years old, not just, but I'm 38 years old. I'm one of the fifth youngest parliamentarian at the moment in the parliament. I'm on two, I'm on 350 parliamentarians. I got my education from University of London. Then I became a lawyer. Uh, I, I practice. I used to practice in the chamber of the uh, one of the best lawyer of the country. Then I started the politics. The young peoples. One thing you must remember: you will hear one word every time in your life. That is no, n o. Whenever you want to do something new, your parents, your surroundings will say no. It is so important to overcome this n o two words. And it's so important that you fail, and you fail, absorb the failure, and try again and again. I am one of the very few, and many of you clap when I say I'm the youngest parliamentarian, and also you will be happy to know this is not my first time in parliament, this is my second time in parliament. <laughs> so my voters, they are youth, they have faith on me. So when I do started politics, I have a very good career, traditional career in court, I have a big chamber. I have seven, six associates with me, three clerks. So it's a very prestigious, honorable, dignified, money-wise, very valuable profession. Then I went to start going to villages and I've seen the problems, so many problems, and, and that requires a political solution. So I started doing local politics. Everyone says no. My brother says you are stupid. You become UK barrister, you want to do politics. My wife says I will leave you if you do politics. <laughs> My even daughter, even when I am from a constituency, where two MPs died in two years accidentally. So I'm the third MP in five years last time. Uh, so even my daughter says the cards area, you must live from this area. Um, so this all knows I have to overcome. In life, the all challenge is to overcome this nose. If you overcome this nose, you will be leader, you will be entrepreneur, you will be social entrepreneur, you will solve social problem, 
he will concentrate on social problem solving. We all need to create a new world. We all need to create a, create, create a redesign the world. Um, someone says about the loan problem, uh, of course. Um, Bangladesh is the home ground for microfinance, you know. And microfinance is something where loan is given only on the basis of trust. Only trust. When a lady uh, come with for an application of microfinance, the person who give um, the microfinance, he don't look into his, his or her property. There is no mortgage, no collateral, no hypothecation, no collateral guarantor, no personal guarantee, only trust they give the money. And the recovery rate is 99.8, highest in the whole world. If you look at the recovery rate of microfinance, it overcome any traditional banking system. Now for the last five years, America is giving microfinance to its uh, women and uh, young entrepreneurs, and their recovery rate is also 98.9%. So it's a huge model we have developed so far as it's concerned with microfinance. Then we come up with the social entrepreneurs. Um, also, Dr. Yunus give a model of social business. This is one model of social entrepreneurship. Many can follow it, many don't. So, so we think it's high time to revisit our thinking. It's high time to redesign our thinking. It's high time to reshape the world we want. And um, there is a so-called generation gap, but I don't think there is a generation gap. The older peoples, they dream a world, but they fail to make it. So they will contribute, the youth people, to make this world the older people dreamed. So the Dr. Yunus says about three, zero unemployment, zero carbon emission, and zero poverty. So we dreamed a world of zero carbon emission, zero unemployment, zero poverty, and of course, green world or green planet. So if you do business, I highly say you must concentrate on S factor, that is service for the society, and also you must keep in mind P factor, profit, planet, and people. Don't concentrate only on profit. Don't concentrate only on people. Don't concentrate only on planet. You have to make a juxtaposition of these three, three propositions. I'll conclude my um, speech with giving an example of success business model where they only concentrate on 1P profit and that's why I can't say it's a success story. For last one year, one new product launched in America that's called Jewel. It's a nicotine-based uh, pro product for young people, boys or girls, young boys. So this is something that people can take and after taking that, they will feel taking cigarettes or something like that. So it's a pre-tobacco type product. Nobody knew it before. So two Stanford graduate, they developed this product. They developed the design, design uh, developed the design for making it very popular. And you will be surprised the growth rate in one year is 800%. I think this is one of the highest marketing success in the whole world. But can we make it a call to success? Something that is promoting tobacco, something that is leading people for something which is obnoxious. Can this growth or profit, can truly be profitable for planet and people? Of course not. So in your future life, we all expect you will do business for not only profit, but also people and for also planet. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone.